What's good, everybody? Welcome to the Pull Up and sh- Pull Up Shop. My name is BJ Matthews, aka B Jizzle. Hey, man, and y'all already know who it is. It's your co host that does it the most, Rick Masters. Y'all know who it is at Rick Masters23. Y'all can hit me, Mr. Lee, on Instagram, Rick Masters everywhere else. Hey, people, the red shirts, the basketball pull up podcast, red shirts, the white, the black, the white tanks, and also the hoodies. $25 for the shirts. And also $30 for the hoodies, man. So y'all hit up me and be jizzle on the DMs. I throw the assist back to you, be jizzle. My boy said, you know what I'm saying? Get your shirts, get your hoodies, you know what I'm saying? Run for 25 to 30 bucks a pop. You know what I'm saying? Hit me on my Instagram, be jizzle, B J I Z Z L L E, Facebook, BJ Matthews. Hit us on iHeartRadio as well as Spotify. We have our weekly shows, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast, as well as Twitter and TikTok, the Pull Up Basketball Podcast. So go check that out. Um, YouTube, continue to like, share, subscribe, all of our YouTube videos, and hit that notification bell by the subscribe button, get all of our updated content. So, Rick, we got three topics, you know what I'm saying? The All-Star break is over, you know what I mean? Second week of the season, second part of the season, my bad. Um, we got three topics to talk about. We got to talk about the Sixers, you know, James Harden's debut. Uh, Chris Paul is injured, out for six to eight weeks, ouch. And we got to talk about the top. 10 list for the NBA anniversary. Kobe Bryant is ranked number 10. How do we feel about that? And how can we balance this off to gotta get a good conclusion of why some people put them at the 10 spot and where would we put them um, on our list? So let's get started with James Harden, the beard, you know what I'm saying, in Philadelphia. What do you feel about his debut, bro? And what did you see um, his impact on his first game against the Minnesota Timberwolves? Talk to me. Hey, man, the way I feel about his debut is that if this man and Embiid and the rest of those guys don't win a championship, he has no excuse. I feel like this team is impeccable. I feel like this team is unbeatable when they're playing at their best. I feel like the East has became a very scary place. And, bro, I mean, his debut was amazing. Let's look at the stats, man. 27 points, 8 rebounds, 12 assists. 7 for 12, 58.3% on field goal percentage. 5 for 7 on 3, 71.4%. 8 for 9 on free throws, 88.9%. And a plus minus of 35. People, you can't get no better than that for your first NBA debut with a team. And let me go on to say that when this man was on the court, it opened up the basketball court. The flow and the chemistry between the 76ers and the Minnesota Minnesota Timberwolves was just, it, dude, it was almost like playing NBA 2K, bro, on easy. I mean, everybody was so worried and so focused about, about Harden because they know he can shoot. They know he can go to the basket and dominate. They know he could pull up mid-range. So he's a real offensive threat. And when that type of stuff happens, man, it keeps the defense on their toes. And so I saw so many possessions in that game where he'll come down the court and everybody's so focused on him that there were so many open lanes and so many open drives for Maxi, for Green, for MB, for Harris, for all his other teammates to where they were just, it was looking like a pickup basketball game because they were so worried about Harden. And when that happens, when you have another dominant player like Embiid on your team, it just it just makes it easier for him to score. And it also makes the supporting cast easier for them to score as well. So again, I feel great about this team. I feel like their championship pedigree built. And hey, Harden, you got to win here, baby. You got to win here. But what you think, B. Jizzle? Uh, I'm going to get real detail with this. They beat the Timberwolves, you know what I'm saying, 133 to 102. Got, people got to remember Minnesota has actually been a hot streak. They're seventh in the West right now with Carl Anthony Towns coming off that three-point shootout championship. Uh, Pat Bev has given them an identity with that Minnesota Timberwolves team. Uh, Anthony Edwards has been, you know, pretty good with that team as well. So they've been pretty good, and they beat them by over 20 points. Now, mm-hmm. as far as what I think about the Sixer team, bro, with Harden's addition, let me just say this. Basically, it's about helping the next person, right? So Harden, what I saw with him is his playmaking being a very big, valuable tool for the Sixer team. Harden's a great point guard. You remember last year when he was with Brooklyn with Kyrie Irving. Kyrie Irving said, look, you're the point guard. I'm going to be the shoot the two guard because his playmaking was able to open up players for the three-point shot, find open cutters, uh, you know, outlet passes, you know, four-court passes, stuff like that. Harden's an elite point guard. You know what I'm saying? So what I see with this team in Philadelphia, what he's going to do is open up the lane for MB, uh, George's Niang, Danny Green, Tyrese Maxey. Um, all these other, you know, role players, he's going to open up the lane for them. 
And of course, he can score the ball with the best of them. And, you know what I'm saying? With a step back three and stuff like that. So I see him having the best time of his life um, with this team because he never played with a guy like Joel Embiid, which I'm about to get into right now. He had 34 points and 10 assists. I don't think it's any question or any concern. Joel Embiid is at least in the top two in the MVP race. You can put him with Jokic. You can put him with DeMar DeRozan. Um, Giannis kind of fell off a little bit um, after that loss to Philadelphia last week. But Joel Embiid is in the top two. You know what I'm saying? However you slice it. Embiid's on a mission to win that MVP, and I see him being very dominant and healthy with this team. Now he has a point guard like James Harden to feed him the ball. I kind of saw when they were playing against Minnesota, he said he was, you know, probably the most open he's ever had um, in his whole career. We're talking about MB. You saw him fumbling a few of those passes because he was like, oh, I didn't expect the pass to come like that. You know what I'm saying? He's so used to, you know, dribbling the ball and trying to dunk on people. Hard is like giving him a little shovel pass, you know, pick and pop, pick and roll, uh, you know, corner three, stuff like that, making the game easier for MB. So I just think it's a matter of time for MB gets very, you know, accustomed to that. And once that happens, it'll be very scary. But the last point I want to make, bro, that I don't think people are really paying attention to is Tyrese Maxey. I like this kid, man. I really like Tyrese Maxey's game, and I think he's going to play very well with James Harden. James Harden being the one, Maxey being the two, he's able to take a lot of pressure off of James Harden because what I see with Maxey, he had 28 points, so he can score the ball, get an outlet uh, pass from James Harden, attack the rim and shoot. But one thing I got to give Maxi credit is he plays all out defense. You saw James Harden doesn't really play defense at this stage of his career. So what that going to do, going to give James Harden more energy to play make on offense. So now with Maxi doing all the you know, little things that James Harden doesn't want to do and being the ultimate teammate, that's going to bring more production out of James Harden and Joel B. So those three combinations right there, man, it's going to help one another. So let me ask you this question. What do you have to respond about that? And also, do you have any concerns about this Philly team? So let me start with the concerns, B. Jizzle. Now, the three top concerns that I did see, because there's always pros and cons to any list. So, the, the, the you know, Doc Rivers and James Hart. And I'm going to explain. I'm just going to go through the list. Doc Rivers, James Hart. You have Embiid and James Hart. And then you have James Hart in his defense. Now, all three of the things I said all include James Harden. So basically what I'm saying is James Harden is the heartbeat. He is the big impact, you know, slash Joel Embiid of this team. So what I'm getting at is if James Harden is doing good, we're going to see games like Minnesota. We're going to see them blow people out. We're going to see them have a lot of fun. But if James Harden isn't doing too well, not only does that put more on the big man, Mr. Embiid, but it also is going to pack the team overall in a negative way. So let me start with, James Harden and Doc Rivers. Now, me personally, I don't have nothing against Doc Rivers. I mean, he's not one of my, you know, top favorite coaches. But one thing that I will say that's a negative slight towards him is that Doc Rivers is pretty emotional, man. Like once he gets hot headed and once he gets going, it's, it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help the team. It doesn't help himself. And where James Harden comes into play, as we already know, he likes to get his foul calls. So then when he gets hype and you got a character like Doc Rivers getting hype as well, that's going to hurt the team. I already see techs coming in the future. I already see delayed games coming in the future if they don't get a cap on that quick. Let's move on to the next one. We have Embiid and James Harden. Now, it's not so much James Harden. I'm looking at Embiid because I saw, I counted, but I stopped counting after the eighth possession so many times where James Harden will give Joel Embiid super duper nice open looks. I'm talking about the high screen pick and roll. He literally sets Embiid up perfect. This dude comes down, he waits, he's patient. Embiid sets that screen and then Harden, now we know Harden could either shoot or pass, but Harden is actually trying to keep Embiid involved. I almost got a little, a little like, you know, my breath got kind of got taken away because I'm like, damn, if Kobe and Shaq could have figured this out early in their careers, they'd probably have more rings, but I digress. When I saw Harden just setting Embiid up, Embiid was very hesitant, man. Like Embiid would be at the three-point line, inside the three-point line, and he would sit there for two, three seconds. I'm sitting there counting. It's like he's thinking about it instead of just letting it fly. And then he'll pump fake for no reason. And then he'll come down like he's about to dunk and hit a layup. And then he'll throw a wild out of control pass 
to a to a guard or a forward on a three point line when he should have took his seven foot tail up there and just flicked it in or shot like a little two foot shot or just hit the three because he was wide open. But I know that's gonna come with time because that was James Harden first game with him. You know, within games you get better and better. So I'm, I'm gonna keep that at a at a minimum for right now. I, I, hopefully in the next five to ten games we'll see a big difference. But that could be an issue of jo- Joel and B don't pick it up. Now with the last issue, defense. Now, I will say, when James Harden started off, he was you could tell he was excited. This man was actually, like, playing defense. Like, he's actually running over screens, running through screens, running, chasing down his man on the baseline. And then as the game went on, he went back to James Harden. He went back to the James Harden that we knew. And here's the thing. B. Jizzle, me and you both know, playoff basketball and regular season basketball, the biggest difference is defense. When it comes to the playoff, I swear it feels like March Madness in the NBA, bro, because even if a team is 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 like rated number eight, dumb mugs is playing you hard to the point to where if you have too many off nights, that number eight seed might just be going to that semi. So you when the playoffs come hard really needs to dial in and focus and play defense the whole four quarters. But overall, man, besides those three, you know, cons that I just listed out with James Harden and his impact. I think past that point, man, if they could just keep it consistent and keep it together and offset the cons that I said, there is no way that James Harden and B can't get this this championship for Philly, man. But that's all I got to say on that. All right, let me finish it off then. So the two concerns I got, number one, you just mentioned Doc Rivers is one of them. All those points that you made were valid. So it's Doc Rivers' job to correct those points, and it's going to come in the playoffs. We understand Doc Rivers has blown four three one leads, including last year against the Atlanta Hawks for a inferior team to that Philadelphia team going in. So that's on Doc Rivers. He has to be able to correct some of these mistakes as well. James Harden, Joel B, they're who they are. So your job as the coach is to bring out the best in them and continue to keep them locked in. I, I understand with James Harden, I feel like right now, if he messes this up, he'll be probably the biggest mess up in NBA history because you're literally – in a position now where you have another guy who's just as dominant as you at his position. So it's no more, I didn't have, you know, any help. I didn't have a person to, you know, help me out with this part of the game. Like I had too many responsibilities. Like in Houston, he had a lot of responsibilities. And you could tell a lot of times, you know, he was getting tired, you know, having to play, make, dribble, and score the ball. Like that takes a lot of energy. And he stopped playing defense. You got to remember when he was at OKC, a lot of times he would play against the toughest, you know, scorer on the team because, he had enough energy where Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook taking more of the scoring low. Well, now you have the same thing in Philadelphia. You got somebody in Joel Embiid to help you with the scoring low. You got Tyrese Maxey to help you out with the defense. So all you got to do is play me and score the ball. So you shouldn't be getting tired. But that that's one thing. Doc Rivers has to be able to make those adjustments in the playoffs. Will he do it? That would be the big question. Next part is the bench. How much contribution is he going to get from the bench players? George's Niang, Danny Green, Shake Milton, um, uh, cork mass. I, I hope I'm saying it right, but they're going to have to be able to shoot the ball. They're going to play defense. They're going to play do the dirty work. That's one. Of the, that's going to be one of the biggest keys. Um, their bench. You know, they have a great starting five, but their bench is going to be questionable. But I just think with James Harden, this is his time to prove that look, I'm an elite player in this game. Um, I understand the playoff failures he's had. You know, get the Spurs in Game Six back in 2000, I believe 16. And then in 2017 against the Warriors in game seven when they missed all them threes. But as far as the playoffs, now I got somebody with Embiid. I got a squad. We're going to take it this year. That's I want James Harden to put that pressure on himself. I think they can beat the Milwaukee Bucks based on their, their personnel. And Milwaukee, I feel like they digressed from last year. I think if Philadelphia and Milwaukee face in the playoffs, I think Philadelphia will beat them. I think if Philadelphia plays uh, Chicago, I think Philadelphia will beat them. Now, the, t- the team I think they're going to give them some trouble is Brooklyn because Brooklyn, of course, got Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. And then you got that bench. And then you got Ben Simmons, who's going to be able to play defense for his team. So that's going to be a dangerous team. But then you look at their coach, and Steve Nash not the, is not the best coach. So pretty much all in all, man, it's, it's up in the air. Philadelphia can do it. It's going to be up to James Harden, Jordan B, staying consistent, staying locked in. Doc Rivers is going to have to be able to coach this team in the playoffs and make adjustments. As simple as that. Anything else? The only thing I got to say on, on what you just said is that you kind of hit it. Doc Rivers got to have his head in the game as well with those adjustments. Because like you said, looking at that bench, 
I'm not seeing too many supporting casts when it comes to shooting. You kind of nailed that. So since you don't have that, and we already kind of passed that trade line, obviously, then they're really going to have to focus on defense. So you made a very strong point on that, man, because, again, everybody knows that postseason is all about defense, man. That defense is crazy. So if they can't shoot the ball, at least keep the other team from scoring so that we can move to the next.